If you're interested in a career in analytics, more than likely you're going to need to make it through an interview at some point. So stick around and I'm going to share with you my top four tips for crushing the analytics interview coming up right now. You just got to analyze stuff. What is up everyone? Matt Bratton here with tmbanalytics.com, your analytics career headquarters back with another video. This time with tips for you after you most certainly took my advice in the seven steps for landing more analytics interviews video. Remember that one? Yeah. So you took those seven steps and now you're snagged yourself an interview and it's time to go and get ready. Now, there's always going to be the tried and true basic advice like show up on time, dress professionally, research the company, don't be an asshole, you know, all the kind of stuff that you should generally do for any interview, analytics role or otherwise. So I don't want to waste your time on any of that stuff, but rather I wanted to do something and dig a little bit deeper. Therefore, I pulled together my top four, four tips because I'm tired of doing top five videos. <laughs> that are going to help you if you're heading into an analytics interview situation. So with that, let's go ahead and bust out with tip number one, which is to keep it conversational. Keep it conversational. And you can do that while simultaneously showing off your curiosity, which is a great skill for any, any analyst to have, right? So you see, every company is going to operate a little bit differently. They're going to have their own nuance to the ways that they capture data, their systems that they use so on and so forth. So when you're asked questions, for example, about the tools that you've used or the experience you have doing analytics, absolutely, thing number one, answer that question. But wrap your response in a question of your own and push it back on them by asking about how they do things. What are the tools they use? And then follow your curiosity so that it becomes more conversational. What this is going to do is give them a glimpse into what it would be like training you, explaining to you their data tool stack, and if you're asking the right kinds of questions, they're already going to start imagining you working there along with them side by side. And if it's a job that you really want, that's a good thing, right? You know what else is a good thing? Tip number two. And this one is all about picking your data stories ahead of time. What this means is you're going to be asked a series of questions that you should anticipate, like tell me about a time that you had to solve a problem on a tight deadline or run an analysis and make up assumptions or work with a difficult team member, right? In whatever flavor, situational flavor that these questions come up, uh, you should come in with about five stories is my magic number that you should know just backwards and forwards and up and down and left and right and BA, BA, select start, okay? That is going to answer a variety of these questions. And what I mean by this is each story doesn't have to address a very specific thing. Rather, each one, each one of your stories could be used to answer several different questions because it highlights the different skills that you have, like creativity and communication and conflict resolution. And by having those things on tap, you don't have to like literally come up with examples on the spot. You've already got these ready to serve up and it just takes the mental load off of having to think on your toes, right? So seriously, what this preparation does as well is make your stories that much more adaptable because you know it so well, you see how it could be used or retold or reframed to sell a different skill depending on how the conversation goes. It's time well spent. Speaking of time well spent, if you are getting value out of this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. And if you're watching this, it likely means that you're interested in a career in analytics. And if that's the case, do yourself a favor and please subscribe to my channel because I drop new content every week on all things analytics careers. All right, let's go back. Back to, back to tip number three. We're already on number three. We're halfway there. So actually, this, one, this tip is a more of a word of caution than anything else. But if you have a portfolio that you're just dying to show off, be sure that you're prepared to speak intelligently and passionately about what you're planning to show, okay? Too often, I see aspiring analysts who are either directly ripping off someone else's work or they've just followed a tutorial somewhere to create something and they therefore don't necessarily know exactly what they've done, why they've done what they've done, nor are they particularly passionate about what it is that they've done. <laughs> and what this ends up leading to is an awkward show and tell situation that leaves 
you anxious and the interviewer generally underwhelmed at best, at worst, just completely dismissive, okay? Honestly, if you're having to choose between dispassionately showing off work that you've copied or speaking intelligently about work that you've actually done, go with the latter, just saying. All right, finally, tip number four, coming in hot. And this one, this one's gonna be odd, but you have to trust me. Time management, okay? Sometimes I hear people giving, you know, ballpark answers about how long your introduction should go, right? But rarely does the guidance go beyond that. And I'll tell you what, whether I'm the interviewer or the one being interviewed, I'm always very keenly aware of the time that's been allotted for the interview to take place. And I make sure that my answers are concise and the questions as well, if I'm, I'm the one asking the questions. And I'm gonna bring up how much time we have remaining at least once during the interview, usually with about 10 minutes left, just to keep the room in order because sometimes the interviewer gets lost in, in what they're doing, they're not even aware of what time it is, and next thing you know, one of you, you know, is is just like, oh my gosh, I got I gotta run. I gotta, you know, the awkward cutoff and they've gotta run and jump into another meeting or another interview or something like that. So that's that's thing number one about time management. Also, please don't show up 15 minutes early. Or if you do, at least wait outside. Aim to come in with about five minutes before your interview. I can't tell you how stressed out it makes me and other hiring managers knowing that there's a candidate just sitting around waiting to be called in while we're frantically running around trying to print out resumes and round up people to jump in on the interview that you know this is stuff behind the curtain that you're not supposed to see but it happens okay so use that time to get your breathing under control get your mind right so that you can strut in on time with confidence all right and with that if you want more tips on analytics interviews go on and head over to tmbanalytics.com slash analytics dash interviews, link in the description. There you can sign up for my analytics interview secrets workshop where I'm going to be going much, much more in depth on this whole subject and just make sure that you've got everything that you need in order to absolutely dominate your analytics interview. Got a few extra bonuses in there as well. So go check that out. And with that, we're done for now. Thanks for watching.